Hey everyone, I'm Hunter, and this is Dungeons In Depth, the series where we break down each dungeon's mechanics and challenges and give you some suggestions on how to tackle them. This is gonna be a multi-part series where every dungeon gets its own dedicated video covering some basic strategies, team compositions, suggested champions, and other stuff you'll need to get started. First up is this bad boy right here, the Ice Golem's Peak. This is one of the simpler dungeons in terms of mechanics, and most of the artifacts you can loot from it come from the simpler two-piece sets. But if you're getting started, these artifacts are just what you need early on. Life sets, for example, boost the HP of your champion by 15% per every two artifacts. This is gonna be essential for beating the first stages of harder dungeons, like the Dragon's Lair and the Minotaur's Labyrinth. Without life, your champions probably won't be strong enough to soak up incoming damage and nuke these bosses on their own. You can also get critical rate and offense sets. These are really important as they boost the damage of your attackers. This is gonna be useful everywhere in both PvE and PvP battles. Here's how to see which sets drop on which stages. See the set icons on the left side of the stage selection screen? Tapping them brings up the set bonus, so you'll always know what kind of loot to expect and can decide if this is the dungeon that you need to farm right now. Okay, as with most battles, entering the Ice Golem's Peak costs energy. As you can see, as you progress through the stages, they become more expensive as well as more challenging. But that's not a bad thing. As the stages get harder, they'll also start dropping better artifacts. See the chest icon next to the battle button? It shows the minimum and maximum rank of artifacts that drop from that stage. It doesn't show you the exact drop probabilities, but in general, you'll have higher chances of finding a high rank artifact the further you go through the dungeon stages. Like most dungeons, the Ice Golem's Peak has three rounds. In the first two, you'll be fighting teams of five enemy champions. The exact composition of these depends on the affinity of the Ice Golem, and that changes from stage to stage. These enemies have no special skills, but they can still be tricky in later stages if you're not paying attention, or if you don't have at least a few endgame champions. So, while you can pretty much just smash your way through them early on, you may want to build a strong counter affinity team to farm stage 15 efficiently. This doesn't mean you need to build specific teams to counter the affinity on each and every level of the dungeon, but you should think long term and build up a solid team designed to beat the highest stage. Building a team with a strong affinity advantage on the last level will let you beat the dungeon with much higher quality artifacts and give your team an edge in landing strong hits and applying debuffs. You won't be farming those levels for very long, but you'll want to keep hitting that highest level to hunt for those ultra-powerful artifacts. And here's the big man himself, Plysis the Ice Golf. See the two minions at his sides? Those NPCs are in addition to the main boss, adds for short. You don't need to kill them to beat the boss and finish the stage. The one on the right side of the screen tries to debuff the defense of your entire team. The one on the left side just hits hard. Pretty basic skills here, but these two guys play a pretty vital role in how the battle plays out. Like pretty much all the bosses in Raid, Klysis has very high HP and slow speed. That means your team will most likely be able to take a couple of turns before he gets a go. Oh, and any damage he can deal that's based on enemy HP is going to be super useful here, but more on that later. Klysis' first two skills are pretty straightforward. They're both AoE. One of them, Numbering Chill, also decreases the accuracy of your champions. So if you've got some debuffers on your team, they're gonna come in handy in countering that. Now the third skill, Frigid Vengeance, is what makes this boss unique. When Klysis drops below a certain HP point, Frigid Vengeance is activated automatically. It attacks your entire team and can deal plenty of damage. Frigid Vengeance has a nasty little trick and gets stronger if Klysis adds his two minions are alive. This attack ignores half of your champion's defense for each minion still standing. That's no joke, especially when it comes to death-based champions who will take the full brunt of that hit. It also goes up to a full 100% chance of freezing your team, with 20% chance being the base value for an additional 40% for each add alive. Oh, and those HP levels that trigger Frigid Vengeance? I'll put those right here for you. Remember them, keep an eye on his health, and avoid pushing too hard too early. So as you've probably guessed, the best strategy here is to take out the adds first, then attack Klysis. If both of them are dead, Frigid Vengeance becomes a lot less scary and easier for your champions to deal with. There's a catch though. 
Every time Frigid Vengeance activates, both of the adds are revived and have to be taken out again. Now here's an important thing to keep in mind. He revives the adds, rather than summoning them like some other bosses, the Spiderlings in the Spider Dungeon, for example. Those are two distinctly different mechanics, and that distinction affects both gameplay and your strategy, since you can block the revive on this dungeon, but not in others. So, with all that in mind, what's the best way to beat Klysis? Since all attacks are AoE, your team's gonna be under a lot of pressure. If you bring a lot of squishy attackers, they're going to get wiped pretty easy. You'll need champions that can either heal or protect the rest of the team. You'll also need to be careful with your own AoE, since dropping Klysis beneath those set HP points is going to trigger Frigid Vengeance. Using AoE here might cause it too early. Most artifact sets will work for this dungeon, though in other videos we'll be going in depth about possible artifact builds that go well against the more advanced bosses. For now, let's break down a typical team composition that would work well in this dungeon. First, you'll need a support champion to heal or shield your guys. Klysis deals a lot of AoE damage, and you need to keep your team alive long enough to slug it out with him. Second, you'll need someone with a block revive skill for maximum efficiency. We'll suggest an easy-to-farm option in a bit. Third, attackers that can mow down adds quickly. You could also risk AoE-heavy champions, but you need to be very careful and always bring the adds down to minimal HP before smashing both them and Klysis with an AoE. This way, the adds die before Klysis retaliates and Frigid Vengeance doesn't deal as much damage. Some defense would be great too. Champions that deal damage based on the target's HP work great for bringing down Klysis, and most other bosses more quickly. Fourth option, some defense champions to mitigate incoming damage and let the attackers do what they do best. Now, let's take a look at some easy to find or farmable champions that'll help you take your first crack at Klysis. These aren't the only champions you can use, but they're good ones to fit a typical composition for a beginner team to fill all the required roles. First, we've got Valerie. She's a good support overall and easy enough to get. Just farm carry at Castle. She can shield your entire team, which gives a nice damage cushion against all of the Golem's AoE attacks. And if your team has lots of buffs, the heal that this same skill provides can be pretty handy as well. Another easy-to-get champion that could be really useful here is the Conqueror. He can be farmed in the same campaign location, and while he's good overall attacker, his Purge skill will be super useful for blocking Revive and getting rid of the Ice Golem's adds for good. If you kill one with this skill, that ad won't be revived. Of course, Conqueror is not the only champion with a skill that blocks Revive. There are some stronger epics around. So if you have other champions that fit the bill, feel free to use them instead. If you want to get a healer, some of these rare champions can be summoned fairly frequently in Ancient Shards and might be useful in this dungeon. The Apothecary can only heal one champion at a time, but he also fills the turn meters of your entire team and buffs their speed. It's a really cool advantage that shouldn't be overlooked. The Chaplain is a good dedicated healer that can help you counter the constant damage from the Golem's AoE attacks. Just be careful, since her third skill deals damage to all enemies and might trigger Klysis' Frigid Vengeance. Hexweaver also has an AoE heal and a sweet buff that increases your team's critical chance and speed. There are also ways to maximize the damage your team dishes out. As I've mentioned, Klysis and all bosses in general have really high HP, so attacks that scale with that are going to be really, really good here. The easiest, although not as common way, is to use attacks that deal damage based on the enemy's max HP. These are not as easy to get, but if you've got one, use them. Here's our fan favorite, Coldheart. Give her proper artifacts and she'll be dishing out insane damage against bosses. Aside from skills that deal raw damage based on enemy HP, another option is using champions that apply poison, as poison also deals damage based on max HP. Kale, one of our first four starting champions, is great for that. If you've chosen or summoned him, Kale can be pretty useful against tough opponents since both of his active skills apply poison effects to the target. Keep in mind that bosses in Raid don't suffer the whole 5% of their HP damage from poison, as poison damage is mitigated by the defense stat, like a normal attack, but it's still going to be pretty decent damage. Any of these champions would make for a great addition to your team, but as always in Raid, you can be pretty flexible in the team composition and strategy. 
What's worth remembering is that you generally want to avoid skills like counterattack here, as they can be a handicap. Attacking Klysis too early always risks his last skill being triggered, and if both of the adds are alive, it'll be bad news for your team. So champions that have passive counterattack abilities, skills that strike targets at random, or strong AoE will need to be heavily considered. They can be great, don't get me wrong, but they have a pretty high chance of throwing this fight out into a tailspin. See? Ouch. So to recap, hit the adds first, keep an eye on your team's HP, and be careful with your AoE. Do that, and the Ice Golem's peak won't give you any trouble. Found this video helpful? Hit like and subscribe. We'll be taking all the game's dungeons apart and giving tips on how to beat them in our future videos.